It's time. It's time. And now, it's time for Herman and Sharon. I love you. Thank you for joining us. And we appreciate it. Without you, there's no use being here. Well, we have no TV program or anything. True. The girl we have on today, and I mean she is just a little girl, she writes yeah. all the time. I mean, I'm holding yes, three does. different books in my hand just, just now. I don't know. How many have you written? Eleven so far. Eleven. Eleven. It's a lot of books. So, and her latest one, When a Woman Overcomes Life's Hurts, Discover the Healing and Wholeness God Has for You Today. Great title. Her name is Cindy McMiniman. I like saying that last name. I know, because you, you, <laughs> yeah, you say it right. Is an award-winning writer. She is. National speaker, pastor's wife. That's a full-time job right She's there. She's a type A personality. Director of women's ministries, Bible teacher, with a passion to bring women into deeper intimacy with God, yes. which is what we all need. And she's on the phone right now, so we're going to do this interview by telephone. Oh, stop no, it. She's actually no, here. No, she's over here. Actually, she's actually <laughs> physically No, she here. drove all the way from Orlando <laughs> yes. to be here with us today. You just never Good know what to I'm going to see you. Do. Type yeah. A personality. Took her life yeah, in the you, hands. you definitely are. Yeah. I mean, just watching you, I'm going, there's a motor that never stops running right there. It's it's good book. But, Thank but you. How do you keep this idea process going? You know, most of the books, God has to teach something in me, and as I work through it, I write about it. This particular one, I was talking with the women's ministry director, and I said, where should I go next? What do you see that women really need today? And she said, I would love to be able to put a resource in a woman's hands that can help her move out of the place that she's been stuck all her life because of unresolved hurts in her life. Ooh. And I started thinking about that. Did you have some? I have some. Everybody who walks the planet Everybody Earth is wounded, it, yeah. right? But I figured, you know, I've been through my pain. I've resolved all my stuff. Well, t tell me about your mom and dad, so, so maybe you can kind of reveal some okay. stuff. Okay. I was raised uh, in the church. My parents were leaders in the church. Um, however, my parents divorced when I was 19 years old, That's, after 22 years of marriage. That. that was yeah, that was shocking to me. Uh, we what, also. What ages were they? Uh, what age were my parents? Yeah. I believe my mom was 45 and my dad would have been 50. When they That's divorced. around the time. Yeah, it was after 22 years of marriage. And I was 19 years old and um, in a way it felt like the, the bottom had, had fallen out under, from under me because, you know, we, we went to church, we did it right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There were other factors in there. My dad had enrolled in AA. We never knew he drank. We never saw it. So there were all sorts of things that happened that... Yeah. Um, I guess maybe we saw, but we didn't really process it and know what was going on. So, of course, I had some insecurities in me, and I had some issues I needed to deal with, and I pretty much thought I dealt with them. And then, of course, as I'm writing this book, and I um, put together a self-assessment test, you know, how are you still being affected by your wounds? And then I took that test myself, and God began to show me, there are still areas in your life, Cindy. Why did you react uh, the way you did to that person, that's because you haven't given that area of your life to me and things like that happened. Wow. And then I also discovered, I interviewed about 100 women for this book, um, included the stories of about 20 to 25 and they're, women. They're, they're amazing because in reading the book, yes, it's, it's, and they're all different. Yes, and um, God was faithful in helping me find through uncanny ways women who've been through some of the worst of the worst. Yeah. Some, of the things, yet, th some of the things you point out, lives, yeah. I don't really matter, I'm undesirable, I'm a disappointment, I'm incapable, mm -hmm. I'm too messed up. Mm -hmm. So you felt that, I'm sure, and, and then some many, of, things, many yeah. of the women, mm -hmm. it's kind of a platform that they're standing on. Right, and, and it's a lie that they believe. Uh, yeah, I'll never be good enough. I was never good enough. No, but no one will ever love me. No one will ever desire yeah. me. Wow. Things like that. What causes a woman to think that way, though? Just uh, all the things that's happened in yeah. her life that accumulates. Many of the stories. 
were about a little girl who felt rejected by her father or she didn't have a father. Uh, one of the girls uh, that I talk about, um, her mother was pregnant with a baby boy when she was just a little girl and mom got up in the middle of the night to check on her but then stumbled, went into premature labor, lost that little boy and her father turned away from her, turned away from God, just shut down emotionally after he lost his little boy and never really wanted that little girl after that. And, and she knew it. She knew it yeah. and she went into a marriage feeling like, you know, my, my father never wanted me, maybe you, my husband will want me. And her husband ended up cheating on her, rejecting her. She found herself abandoned, um, divorced, feeling like no one will ever love me. And so mm -hmm. seeing that pattern yeah. repeated throughout her life, yeah and believing that lie. Uh, wow. You talk about uncovering the wounds. Mm -hmm. There's a reason for your pain. So you have, in talking to these individuals that mm -hmm. you have in this book, right. you had to approach it, I'm sure every one of them different, right? Because they're, they're, they're peeling away something that they have kept very close to them. I started out with a survey I had women respond to when I go out and speak or when I'd be in certain places. And then I followed up with questions. There were certain women though whose stories were, they'd been through so much devastation that I, I didn't even do the survey. I just started out and said, tell me about life and how you got where you are today. Wow. And um, it, one of the things that I've reinforced to women is that it's not so important to understand why that hurt happened but it's mm -hmm. essential to trust the one who allowed that hurt to happen in his goodness and in his loving kindness because there's a reason for it and he wants to redeem it in your life. Yeah, you, you have, uh, and you need the book because you will probably find yourself. That, that's what is interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. sure in this many people will go that's parts of me right there. And then you read the right. next chapter and you say, that's me. My so you, friend's a director of women's ministries and she wanted to lead a Bible study on it so she thought I should read it first and she read it through the scope of how can I help other people with it. But she found, she said, I found myself on nearly every page and I went through those application questions myself and God revealed to me areas of my life that I hadn't yet surrendered to Him and said, God, mm -hmm. you allowed this but you love me so redeem it. and." refine me through it yeah. and I want to Cindy, I how did you find, you how did you find the ladies that you interviewed for this book? I mean, how do you go about doing that? One time, uh, if you remember reading the story of Sharon and yes. um, just the abusive Wait, childhood she had. Yeah. <laughs> her name was Sharon. And I happened to go uh, take my daughter uh, to get her hair done at a place we've never gone before but the woman went to my church and she said I'll give your daughter a free French braid why don't you come in so I took her in there and as I was sitting there I began a conversation with the woman and um, she said what do you do I said I write and she said oh I do too and I said what are you interested in writing and she began to tell me a little bit about her story and I said can we sit down sometime and, and talk more and that was a chance happening but God knew I was writing that book Absolutely. and he knew she would be there and mm -hmm. she had amazing transformation in her life when she tell began. That. Tell that story. Yeah, yes. Sharon is um, a woman who started out as just a little girl whose mother tried to kill her and herself when she was just a baby by gassing them on the oh stove. My goodness. And her mother was put into a psychiatric ward and never released. And Sharon was put into the foster home system and experienced a lot of abuse there. And then at five years old, five or seven years old, was returned to her father, who was an alcoholic and drug addict and um, was sexually abusive to her and verbally abusive and physically abusive. And she endured this until 15 years old. She was wow. told that no one would ever love her, no one would ever want her. Um, as soon as her father died, she married the first young man who told her he loved her. Sure. And she had no idea what love was. Uh, shortly after uh, they were married, he began being physically and verbally abusive to her as well and she found herself trapped in a marriage with a man who didn't really love her. Um, she was diagnosed with a very rare form of cancer that should have killed her, the doctor said, right. and right after she was diagnosed her husband left her and she was alone with two daughters and she said she shredded a Bible 
put it in a bucket, brought it to a pastor in town and said, this is what I think of your God. Wow. Because she was so angry. She knew there was a God. She just believed he hated her. And uh, she, she felt at one point that maybe she would die, but she felt like, well, maybe everybody who dies goes to heaven and I can't even die because I'm not good enough for heaven. And, and she just believed that, you know, God was going to make her live miserably on this earth. And that pastor, praise God, was compassionate toward her. And he said, which God are you believing in? And she began to tell her story. And this pastor opened up the Bible and began to share with Sharon uh, passages in the Bible of stories of people, uh, Job, uh, King David, um, the Apostle Paul, and how they wrestled with things and they struggled with things and there was physical and emotional pain in their lives as well. And yet how God used that to glorify himself, to refine them. And then that's, this pastor began to share with her some of the struggles that he's endured as well. And he said, it's important for you to cling to God and trust him through these times and he can work them for good. And mm -hmm. she said she left there telling that pastor, I have to believe in your God and not mine. I have to believe he's the real one. Mm -hmm. And that pastor told her, get into the word of God and read about who he really is. And she began to read and she began to first imagine the kind of God she wanted her daughters to spend eternity with. I want to be a good God and a loving God. And, and she made this list. And can you imagine her surprise when she went to the Word of God and found out Very that well. that is the God of the Scriptures, Very a God well. who loves her with an everlasting love, mm -hmm. a God who has plans for a hope and a future for her. And what happens, the daughter or the son relates to God the mm -hmm. way they relate to their earthly father. She saw God as the same sure. angry, abusive yeah. uh, man who hated her, who was, who was her father. Today she knows he's a loving father and today she actually has an organization called the Path to Life Wellness Center for women recovering from all sorts of cancer oh, where great. she reinforces to them you are loved you are significant and, and obviously God, God has her. a plan in your life yes That's great. you would never know sitting across the table from her that she had that kind of devastation in her life she is sweet she is she just emanates the presence of God she has such a calm to her what, I one, love being around her I mean, it, that is that healing is yeah. that yes now that's transformation that it only is. God can do. It is, because people like that should be very needy, yeah. they should be bitter, they should be afraid to be around people. Um, she instills hope in others. Wow. That's complete and thorough mm -hmm. transformation. Ivani, I'm probably saying the name wrong. Uh, Yvonne. A, a daughter of two Mexican immigrants. Mm -hmm. Amazing story. Yes, again, um, feeling maybe nobody wanted her, feeling somewhat yeah. abandoned. A teacher, a school teacher, uh, took her in and uh, built her up, cared for her, and um, in spite of the rejection she felt, in spite of um, just uh, falling in love and, and feeling rejected, she today is taking in young girls who need help. She is instilling in them that God is the one who can satisfy. What a plan God yeah. has for our life. Yeah. Right. Isn't that amazing? I mean, you'd say, you, you mean God wanted her to be mm -hmm. in that kind of life so that, no, but he mm -hmm. used exactly. that exactly. to change lives of others. I often explain to women, we live in a fallen world. Bad things do happen, mm -hmm. but God takes those things and engineers them into a plan and a purpose yeah. for us yeah. where he can be glorified and we can be extremely blessed wow. as we surrender it to him. You, yeah. you have this in the book yes. where you have mm -hmm. opportunities for uh, actually give yourself right. a critique. Right. Not Application that. steps at the end of each chapter. That I think is one of the most important ones. Yeah. Write down what your pain is yeah. and then look at how you can thank God in that. What good things have come out of that? And sometimes women initially think, well, I can't think of one thing good that's come out of my pain. Yeah. And I'll say, while you were in that abusive relationship, did you have a child? Well, yes, I did. What is that child like today? We have this extremely close relationship. And that child does love Jesus, and that child uh, does care for me and protect me. And uh, wow, I don't know if I would have that relationship had some of this pain not happened. Right. That's where right. we begin to look at the blessings in the midst of the bitterness and think, yeah, was that God maybe orchestrating and working for the good in the situation? Uh, going back to 
Sharon, mm -hmm. you were just talking about, th th this is in the book, and you, she has, we're just covering the surface of these, but uh, her dying father, the same Sharon, you know, mm -hmm. she's talking about, you right. know, just love to be around her. Uh, uh, he, he said to her, can you imagine in that, in that situation, he's dying. She's 15 she, years old. She, yeah, she needed to kill herself uh, <laughs> after, he when died. He, after he died because no one would ever want her or love her. That was the, the that ultimate was the last control words of manipulation. Yes. Oh my goodness. He left the, left the world saying that to her. Oh so can you imagine that wound? Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. And if oh you're God. watching and you're saying, but you don't know what happened to me, it's in here. <laughs> I guarantee you there's a story here that you go, how did she know? But isn't it amazing yeah. how stories like this, unbelievable mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what God can do right. with a life when we give up. Exactly. And, and I, um, I was looking for some of the worst of the worst stories, but I wasn't sure what kind of condition those women would be in. And yet someone would say, oh, you need to go talk to Christina. Do you remember Christina's yes, story? Yes, yes. Just growing up as a, a child, you know, making drugs for her parents who are in the illegal drug yeah, trade. Yeah. And yet this woman spouts scripture, this woman's a leader, this woman runs a 250 uh, child Bible school uh, every summer. This yeah, woman's Christina, a leader in the church. Age wow. Age. She yeah. knew how to cut and package every drug imaginable, mm -hmm. uh, wow. cocaine, heroin, meth, uh, everything. Mm -hmm. And this woman has never used drugs herself. She, <laughs> she found Jesus at the age of, what was it, seven or 10 yeah. years yeah. old? 10 years old. Because somebody came out to a place and collected the worst of the worst kids, yeah. brought them in, showed wow. them they were loved. It was a bus ministry. A bus yeah. ministry that took her to a vacation Bible school yeah. way out I'm in the desert. Yeah. And today Those this woman great. runs a Bible school for and I, children. And, you, like and she has a story of her asking her mom, you know, mm -hmm. uh, this guy wants to take me. And she go, get go, out. Go, as long as get, get out, out of here. here. If he wants, yeah, go. And that was the best decision in the world. And yet children who grow up with things like that, let me tell you, they are amazing parents. They see what they didn't have as a child and yeah. they pour that onto their uh -huh. kids. My kids are gonna feel loved and they're gonna feel significant. Exactly right. And I'm also gonna reach out to that child who nobody is noticing. Mm -hmm. uh, this girl, Jean. Jean, yes. Uh, she had a lot of questions about forgiveness and she had aborted mm -hmm. a child when you got into talking to her. Jean had what I think is the most common pain among women and that is the pain of regret. Whether it's regret of of, of term, terminating that pregnancy and, and killing that unborn child or regret of not working in that marriage or regret of, of leaving that spouse, regret of uh, not uh, having harmony in that relationship with a parent before they died. And Jean's uh, thing that was keeping her stuck was, okay, I realize God's forgiven me, but I can't forgive myself. Mm -hmm. um, I, I could never undo what I did and it just keeps coming back. Yeah. And I had to take Jean back to the cross, back to the scripture and look at what Jesus really did there on the cross. He knew the sin in Jean's life. He knew about what she would do. He knew about her regret and shame that would happen later. And yet he still died for her. And what he did was enough. And by saying, but that didn't cover what I did, is saying what Jesus did was enough for everybody else but not for me. We began to talk about that and I said, Jean, you have got to trust that yeah. what he did was enough for even you. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. She lives day to day having to remember that promise, but she's yeah. remembering it. What a wound, what a wound. Yeah. Wow. It, you know, Jill Kelly, mm -hmm. who, is, who is Jim Kelly, he was a quarterback. Mm -hmm. Famous, well known. Uh, he was a Hall of Famer. Uh, and the son was born with. What, what they call crab disease. It's an unusual. Yes, and they knew very, very little human, about yeah. that disease. Causes the body, to, all of the major organs, to just eventually shut down. So this baby, at about three months old, was dying as he was growing older and only expected to live to be two. 
Now, how did um, you contact her or get in touch with her? I read her story. Um, she's another uh, Harvest House author, and I happened to read her story and just the amazing transformation, and I called her up and I said, can I use elements of this story and let me ask you more? And it has now been several years since that's happened, and she still lives um, in a sense as if it happened yesterday in the, I, I'm longing wow. to go to heaven and see Hunter, but also just that, uh, that realization of you know her famous verse, whom have I in heaven but you? And there is mm -hmm. none on earth I desire besides you. And she lives in that intimate relationship with Christ because of where she met him in that, that pain with raising that baby. That situation uh, with her baby Hunter uh, she believes healed her marriage, brought them all to the Lord. She believes that's what brought her yeah, husband many times to the Lord. The opposite happens. Yes, yeah, it tears. a situation like that can tear up a family. Absolutely. And they saw that starting to happen. But then as she clung to the Lord, mm -hmm. God used that situation and God drew her, her husband in. and. and yeah, the woman is children. such a key I, in, in, a, in a marriage, it's, it's in the a, heart it, of the marriage. It's amazing how the Lord hears you in, in that time of need. Yeah. You know, I'm reading the uh, Old Testament this morning again, and, and every time they would know what the war, Lord wanted them to do, mm -hmm. and many of them that were to the point of where they realized they had to repent, it says in there that they tore their yeah. clothes mm -hmm. and cried out in agony, please right. God. And, and it's even though they had done horrible things, it says God heard, heard. them every time yeah. they did yes. that because he, he was looking at that heart and said, you know what, here's a contrite mm -hmm. heart that is crying out to me and wants help. And God yes. is always there. That's what your book mm -hmm. reveals is yes. that when we cry out to him, he's always there. And when people say, Cindy, what's the one thing that you can tell women to do when they're in this situation of, of hurt and pain and I don't know why and why God and where were you, I say cry out to Him yeah. because the Lord is near the mm -hmm. brokenhearted and He hears their cry. The day she died inside, Deanna and Brian, mm. he had an affair. Right, and Deanna also uh, found out when she was older that she was adopted and wondered why her parents never told her about it. Why was it a secret? And she very much felt uh, that uh, that shame inside of her. Why did my original parents not want me? Why did my adopted parents not tell me I was adopted? What's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. Then she goes into this marriage and finds out that her husband cheated on her with her best friend. Uh, found that after they moved far away, away from friends, dealing with that oh, alone. Boy and getting into a church, learning about forgiveness, but still having that wall up. Mm -hmm. And then Deanna had to realize, you know, I've got to let this go. Yeah. I've got to forgive him. He wants to reconcile. But in many ways, I don't even want to look at him. I'm angry and I want to hold on to this anger. And she had to realize that through forgiveness, she didn't just let her husband off the hook. She let herself off the hook and she could begin to live again because the day she died inside was the day she found out that's, about her husband's that's affair. That's a great statement you just yeah. made. Yeah, what was that? She let herself <laughs> off the hook. Yes. When you forgive someone, you let yourself yeah. off the hook yeah. because she had been we the one who that. was in bondage. Mm -hmm. yeah. We think it's that. doing something to them. Mm -hmm. It's doing it to us. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, what is your favorite chapter? I mean, I know it's, I know reading a book, everything is like, right. that's your newest baby. Oh. I mean, here's your, my newest baby because I've heard all sorts of but. In, in many ways, I like the chapter, That's Just the Way I Am, because I have found myself saying that too. We will go back to a situation um, and say, you know, well, you know, I was raised uh, as the child of an alcoholic, so that's just the way I am. I'll mm -hmm. always have that insecurity. But that's a way of saying God that's can right. never heal me. He can never set me free. He can never completely do that work that he wants to do in me. And I have to remember, you know what? I am already healed. I am already a new person. That's right. And so uh, God came to redeem me the way I am so that I can be like him. Yeah. And But by far, I think my most favorite chapter is 
uh, the last one, I Can Be a Blessing, because it wraps up the whole book and shows how each of these women in pain have now gone back into the battlefield, into those places of the wounds to help pull other women out wow. of the same kind of pain. And so it, they, they it, have to relive that. It, ha it takes a complete healing to be able to go back to the painful places oh, and say, yeah. I'm going to help don't you think of that, with the help I've had. I, sure. I can, you don't yeah. think of that, do you? I mean, right. you don't think about they have to relive mm -hmm. what yeah. they tried to get away from. Right. I think of Misty, the woman who was involved in the adult I entertainment yes. industry yes. simply to be able to feed her child, yes. being a single mom. And yet when she was delivered from that, there's a part of you that says, I will never go back. I don't even want to think or see anything that would remind me. Yeah. But when God heals us, He heals us completely. And then her desire is, I am going back there to show Christ's love to those women who are still in the devastating hurt so I can give them hope and help pull them out. And she's been able to do that. Yeah, wow. Amazing. Mm -hmm. What's your next book? I am working on a book right now called When a Mom Inspires Her Daughter. Since I wrote When a Woman Inspires yeah. Her Husband, now it's when a mom inspires her daughter. And my daughter, Dana, who is now 20 years old, is going to be helping me with that. Okay. I'll be interviewing moms. I'll be interviewing a lot of daughters around her age. And she's going to be doing some sidebars. And we're going to work together on that. Again, something I don't have completely right, but I, I learn mm -hmm. as I write the books how to be more of an inspiring daughter, understanding and affirming her identity and her dreams. Somebody okay. needs your words. There's your camera. Share Christ. If you are hurting today, no matter what you've been through, I just want to encourage you to cry out to the Lord. Mm -hmm. He knows all about what you've been through. And anything that even happened maybe this morning or today, you need to know it didn't take him by surprise. He is waiting to wrap you in his arms and show you he is the answer. He is the way, the truth, the life, and he is your healing. So when you just cry out to him and say, God, I need you, Jesus, I need you. He will be there for you. He will forgive you of that sin in your life if you truly give it to him and say, I need you as my savior as well. And he will take away that guilt and shame and that hurt. And he will be your comforter. He loves you that much. You are the reason he came. You're the reason he died. So he wouldn't have to live without you. Amen. You may think those are just words. Tell you what. Try what she just said. Mm -hmm. Let it be a part of your life. If we'll confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in our heart that God hath raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Mm -hmm. Those could be just words to you, but that's the word of God. What she said works, but you have to put it into your own life. Accept it, live it out, and watch it work. God bless you. Bye-bye.